Police say the Utah woman accused of killing six babies and hiding them along with a stillborn couldn't tell detectives exactly how many infants she had in her home. Quite frankly, I'm still in a state of shock. We were wondering what the heck is going on. I'm sure you've all heard the story of a teenage girl falling in love with a teenage boy and having a child much sooner than she can handle. Mix that in with a substance addiction and you've got a recipe for disaster. In the early 1990s, this is exactly what happened to Megan Huntsman, a simple high school girl from Pleasant Grove, Utah. When she got pregnant, she felt so embarrassed that she left her home. She was only 18 when she married her baby's father. Darren West. They desperately tried to make it work and be a functional family, but they had no personal or professional experience and they were addicted to a horrifying illegal substance. And before long, Megan and Darren didn't have one, but three babies. Money had become a serious issue for them and Megan couldn't seem to kick her self-destructive habit. Amidst this, Megan kept getting pregnant. She was desperate. One day, something in her mind clicked. Tragically, no one saw this. Two decades later, her ex-husband would find the bodies of their seven newborns. What had Megan done and why? And how was it possible for no one to notice this for so long? You're about to find out, but before we delve in, I must warn you that we will be discussing the theme of very young children. This is your chance to turn away. Today's story begins in a small suburb of Salt Lake City, Utah. On February 27, 1975, Megan Huntsman was born to parents Jocelyn and Blaine. As you might expect, Jocelyn and Blaine were Mormons. They were also a middle-class family and fairly stable, supportive one for Megan and her younger siblings. As a result of this, Megan seemed like a pretty normal child. She had a small friend group and would do well in school. But there was one thing. She was extremely shy. She would never share any details of her life with her parents, and even her friends thought that she was secretive. Her mother, Jocelyn, would say of her, she never had the strength to stand up for herself. Unfortunately, being shy and secretive also meant that Megan would not ask for help when she needed it and teenagers often need it. During high school, Megan met a boy named Darren West. He was a couple of years her senior and was a gloomy loner with a penchant for trouble. They both liked each other and Megan felt very attracted to his lone wolf side. She was a lone wolf too, after all. Around two years into the relationship, Darren, who was already in college, proposed to Megan and she said yes. She was only 18. And a few months later, another big milestone would happen to Megan. She became pregnant. But as secretive as she was, she didn't tell anyone about it, not even Darren. Apparently he found out in the very last months of her pregnancy. Somehow she didn't show for a very long time and she would always wear very baggy clothes. But even though Darren now knew, Megan insisted that they keep it an absolute secret from everyone else. So in 1993, Megan gave birth to her first daughter inside her bathroom. She was still living with her parents at the time, so as much as she'd kept her baby a secret until now, she couldn't anymore. The reality of the situation was devastating both to Megan's parents and to Megan herself, who was used to keeping her whole life a secret. Ashamed and scared of her parents' attitude, she took Darren and left the city. So in 1993, Megan and Darren arrived in Pleasant Grove, Utah, but there was nothing pleasant about their life there, as you're about to find out. Megan and Darren were barely adults when they started their family in Pleasant Grove. The house they lived in belonged to Darren's parents, who wanted to help them out as much as they could. Megan found work as a babysitter and a cleaner, and Darren worked in construction. But within a few months, they became addicted to Megan. This was a terrible choice, both for their child and for their mental health. People around the family noticed that Megan was severely depressed. She would also lose several jobs because of her addiction. This is a very hard and very destructive drug that destabilizes anyone's life almost immediately. But perhaps incredibly, Megan and Darren would go on to have two more daughters. These children would often be neglected while their parents' addiction snowballed into a crippling one. 
They would do substance binges for days on end, and they weren't working anymore. They simply couldn't. On top of that, there were regular fights between the two, and they got worse and worse. Common side effects of crystal are paranoia, severe anxiety, and psychosis. So it's not hard to imagine how Megan and Darren became a very toxic couple. By the early 2000s, Darren was also manufacturing the They were spending a few hundred dollars a day on it at that point, and they couldn't afford it anymore. But by now, their marriage was in shambles, and they barely had a life together. Megan would also go on to have several affairs. In 2005, Darren was arrested for possession of chemicals intended to be used in manufacturing. He was sentenced to nine years in prison. In 2011, Megan left the Pleasant Grove home. Darren's parents found out about her affairs and told her to leave their home. Megan left her daughters there, though, in someone else's care. She went to live with her mom in West Valley City. She'd given up substances, but she was now abusing alcohol. And when her father took his life that year, she began drinking even more. Megan herself would say, depression and alcohol took hold of me the same way Drew did. A year or two later, Megan moved in with her boyfriend, Jimmy, in a mobile park home. All seemed well, but really it wasn't. Trust me. It was April 12th, 2014, and Darren was out of prison. He rallied up a couple of friends and went to his old house to get his stuff and move on. When he went inside the garage, he smelled something awful. He tracked the smell down to a box that read, baby stuff, Megan's. He cut through the tight electrical tape around it and opened it. Inside was a bag. Inside the bag were some towels. Inside them, the decomposing body of a day old baby. Trembling with shock, Darren called Megan. She confessed to nothing. She told him she had given birth to a stillborn baby while he was in prison, and she panicked, so she hid it. But Darren felt there was more to it than that story, so he called 911. He was right to do so. Between 1996 and 2006, Megan had seven more babies but she already had three children and she was certain she wanted no more. So after giving birth in her bathtub in 1996, she grabbed her newborn baby and squeezed his neck. She said that she would, she had the baby, she would hold it for a short time. She said that none of the babies were alive more than a minute or two. And then she said that she used her thumbs and she was described what she would just show me like this. I never would have ever thought she was on drugs and or pregnant. But the first two girls um, that she had, no one knew she was even pregnant until someone said, we need to go to the hospital. Megan's in the hospital having a baby. Megan took her secrecy to the extreme when she had seven babies unbeknownst to anyone. Not even her three daughters knew. She hated six of them and the seventh was indeed stillborn. All of them ended up in plastic bags, inside boxes, in her garage. When the police arrived at the house at Darren's request, they made a gruesome discovery that would have Darren falling on the floor and crying. How could Megan kill not one, but six of their offspring? It was surreal. The chief detective on the scene described it as emotionally draining and hugely upsetting to the investigators. Within an hour, the police were at Megan's mobile park home as well, much to Jimmy's surprise. But Megan wasn't at home. She'd already run off to a neighbor, begging him for a gun. She wanted to end her life. But the neighbor knew better, and Megan was arrested and charged with six counts of first-degree murder. She had kept her terrible secret for 18 years years. Police say the Utah woman accused of killing six babies and hiding them along with a stillborn couldn't tell detectives exactly how many infants she had at her home. KSTU reports Megan Huntsman told detectives there were eight or nine babies in her home, but police said they found seven. That's right, Megan had even lost track of her horrific murders. Megan was then asked the most obvious question, why? 
She replied she wanted to prevent her babies from living the horrible life they would have had with her as a poor mother, struggling with crippling addiction. While Megan took the blame for it and expressed her deep regret, her decisions were shocking, confusing, and sad. The news deeply shook everyone that knew her. I spoke with several neighbors on this street who say, not only is it shocking, not only is it disturbing, but it's just very sad because they knew her very well. Quite frankly, I'm still in a state of shock. We were wondering what the heck is going on. Megan's neighbors could see that she didn't look physically well all the time, but how could they not tell she was pregnant so often? She always looked kind of slim. We, I mean, uh, to have this many babies full term, it's like, where were they? Darren's family was just as shaken. Darren had come out of prison a sober man with a goal to do honest work and be a father again. This was not what he was planning to deal with. A paternity test was also conducted, as Darren pointed out to Megan's affairs. But all babies were confirmed to be his. What continued to baffle the prosecution was how Darren was unaware of all the pregnancies. They even called it the million dollar question. But Darren was cleared as a suspect, as there was no evidence of him knowing. And Megan confirmed she had kept everything a secret. Megan was held on a $6 million bail, $1 million for each baby she'd killed. During her hearing, Megan admitted she hadn't been working for two years when she was arrested. You're currently held in custody, mm -hmm. and you indicate no income. Let's see, the last time you worked was December 3rd, 2013? Yeah. You haven't worked since then? It was actually 2012, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. you otherwise have any money in the bank or any other No, I don't. The judge, who had signed the search warrant for Darren's home, said he had quietly hoped and prayed that he wouldn't have to deal with this case in court. Megan's murder shocked everyone who spoke about it. These were very cold and calculated killings. Her family was in tears. They just couldn't believe this was the same Megan that was once a quiet high school girl. No one ever is this shy, timid girl was capable of this. The person I know is not the same girl that the media has portrayed her to be. On February 12th, 2015, Megan Huntsman pleaded guilty to all six counts of murder. You understand that? Count three murder, a first degree felony. What is your plea? Yeah. Megan's statement started with describing how drug and alcohol controlled her life and ended with an apology. Megan received a minimum of five years for each murder and some further sentences for concealing the bodies. Her earliest parole hearing will be in 2064, when she will be 89. This is a horrible story that scarred everyone who was a part of it. It's been horrible for our department and some of the things that officers saw in that garage, they can't unsee. And it was very, very emotionally tough on many of our officers. Megan's daughters are supportive of her. They insist that she isn't a monster, but a scared and desperate woman. They remember all the evenings she made dinner for them and kept the house clean, and they want the world to know that their mom is not evil. However, Megan had a myriad of other solutions to unwanted pregnancy. It's deeply unsettling that a person would choose this way, not once, but six times. Thanks for watching, you guys. Don't be shy and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Till next time.